I believe you also fly airplanes and you've developed, uh, we're going to do a bunch of demos, hopefully. Yes. You developed an application called Flycatcher. So perhaps you can tell us about your flying and then you can tell us about this app because it's really cool. Sure. So I got into flying planes when I was about 15. I did a program called the Young Eagles, which is a national youth program in my school that, I'm sorry, <laughs> in America that gives the youth I think seven to about 16, a free flight in a single engine aircraft. And I remember nice. the first time like flying in the back of a Cessna 152, like feeling extremely enthralled by the entire experience. And then I subsequently enrolled in a flight school in Santa Monica in order to get my private pilot license. And throughout my journey of becoming a private pilot, I have um, worked on a wide range of cybersecurity projects in regards to aviation. And one of them I'll be demonstrating today and shooting photos of today is called Flycatcher. Flycatcher is a Raspberry Pi based device I created that uses a SDR, a software defined radio called um, the FlightAware SDR. It's connected to a central Raspberry Pi device and a 1090 megahertz antenna. And what this device does is that it monitors a frequency called ADSB, standing for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. And what this technology allows is for pilots and ground-based um, facilitators called air traffic control in order to keep track of planes as they fly. So they can see different attributes of planes, such as their airspeed, their altitude, um, and other details such as their identification number. And this technology is widely used within the aviation community, but it has a wide range of security flaws because it is both unencrypted and unauthenticated, meaning that any wow. ground-based hacker could transmit malicious signals on the ADSB frequency, which is the 1090 megahertz frequency, in order to transmit malicious or nefarious data. And one thing they can do is a scenario called spoofing. And spoofing is when a ground ground-based hacker can transmit signals on the ADSB frequency, making it seem like there are airplanes in the sky that don't exist. And we call these ghost aircraft. So what this device does is that it monitors the ADSB frequency using a software-defined radio and uses a um, convolutional neural network artificial intelligence model that I coded that's embedded in this Raspberry Pi in order to spot and track for these ghost aircraft. So what I did was I assembled this device, I ran a FlightAware server on it, and I put together a artificial intelligence convolutional neural network embedded within the device in order to track for hacker aircraft. So here are a few pictures of it. And this is the GitHub repository describing the entire um, device. You can see the materials I use. It's pretty simple. Use the TFD screen, a Raspberry Pi 3B, a custom cache enclosure, um, some screws, an SDR, and the 1090 megahertz rubber ducky antenna. And then the back end uses Python with custom code I created. And whenever like an instance of a spoofed aircraft occurs, it puts a geomarker um, at, at that location where the spoofed aircraft was spotted. So the AI or the neural network, is that running on the Raspberry Pi directly? Yes. Okay, so you're not running on, you're not relying on ChatGPT or anything like that. You've built your own neural network locally and you're just querying that locally, right? Yes, I created this device when ChatGPT wasn't as widely used. So yeah. I custom coded the convolutional neural network model using Python and embedded it on the device. That's amazing. So most of the code is written in Python, I take it? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so you, I believe there's a reason why this is becoming more important, something to do with new regulations. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of the regulations running aviation infrastructure is old. And although the FAA has released newer versions of ADSB, they also have a wide range of inherent security issues because the, these technologies, especially within the aerospace and aviation sectors, were not built with security in mind. And since they were not built with security in mind, they have a lot of like open attack points that hackers can exploit. And Jelena, the, the point I'm trying to make is, I believe the FAA have got some new regulations perhaps with this, and, and that's why this is becoming a big issue. Yes, this is becoming a more prevalent issue because the FAA is mandating ADSB out on all aircraft, making it so all aircraft 
are required to be using this technology that has a lot of open-ended security flaws. So th- th- I'm assuming that applies to airplanes, obviously, but does it apply to other devices like drones and things like that as well? Um, from what I know, it's mostly airplanes. Drones use, unless like it's a relatively large drone, drones use another protocol called Open Drone ID. I mean, that's amazing. You created an AI neural network running on the Raspberry Pi. You built all of the software to find out if someone's spoofing uh, their, their their details, right? Um, this will help people know if there's like real aircraft around or spoofed a- aircraft, right? Yes. Yeah, this is a device that's for cybersecurity researchers and also general aviation professionals to monitor the ADSB frequency in order to make sure that there are no spoofed aircraft in the near vicinity. So Angelina, I've got to ask a question, right? Is it just theoretical? Or has this actually been spoofed in the past? Yes, there has been instances where aircraft have been spoofed in the past. In 2007, a cybersecurity researcher has demonstrated an attack where he was able to spoof various aircraft into different airspaces within a simulated environment by exploiting this ADSB technology. And I mean, the worry is if I spoof an aircraft or say an aircraft is somewhere else rather than where it actually is then I, it, there's potential for collisions, right? Yes. Attacks on the ADSB system can cause a wide range of repercussions, such as mid-air collisions, because you can change the geo-coordinates of airplanes, confusing other pilots and ground-based facilitators. It can get very likely to have collisions mid-air. And I mean, the scary part is you said it's unencrypted and unauthenticated. Yes. What makes ADSB vulnerable is its unencrypted and unauthenticated nature making it so that any ground-based transmitter can transmit malicious packets into the air that makes it seem like there's aircrafts in the sky that are actually there. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm glad you created this, and I think it highlights an issue that um, FAA and others need to work on, right? Because, I mean, if this protocol is unencrypted and unauthenticated and simple enough to spoof this, it, it's like a real worry. Yeah, definitely.